Browse through the App Store charts and you'll see something interesting. The apps that draw you in, that create an emotional connection, are those with mascots. Duolingo has the owl, Reading Eggs has like an egg thing, Reddit has that little alien guy, and Class Dojo has, well, I don't even know what that is. Big companies are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars designing their mascot, giving it a personality and branding their entire app around a cartoon character. And I guess it makes sense why. Mascots don't just make an app look cute, they give users a reason to keep coming back. They give an app a soul. But Adam, I'm just a solo developer. I don't have the skills to create a mascot, the money to market it, or the charisma to give it personality. Well. You're in luck. It just so happens that I've been down the mascot rabbit hole. I've been studying how to design one myself and the techniques used to animate it on a budget. In this video, I'm gonna make the case for why your app needs a mascot and how you can make your own using AI services like ChatGPT and Nano Banana. Plus, I'm gonna show you some of the tips I've learned along the way that makes a mascot feel like it's alive and not just some static image plonked on the screen. I've been building Piano Run, and it started as a basic app just to teach you how to learn a few simple songs. I thought, hey, I wanna do something a bit more with this. So I turned it into a game, and it was even featured on the App Store under the Our Favorites category, but it was kind of lacking something. I always envisioned having a mascot or a sidekick, something that guides you through the game. And I had a problem. I'm just not that great at drawing. So any mascot I designed ended up looking super amateur and kind of dull. Divert your eyes, don't look at my secret shame. So I enrolled in some online courses to learn the fundamentals of character design and started to sketch obsessively. I tried products like Loti, and they look good and all, but there's such a steep learning curve. Ideally, I wanted a character design that could be animated easily using simple Swift UI views. It has to be simple, instantly recognizable, and it has to have some sort of personality. Then I had to think how this mascot would actually interact with the app itself. So it doesn't just look like it's being plonked in there. If the identity of the app is going to be rebranded and based entirely around this mascot, I needed to serve an actual purpose for it so it actually fits in. So I started brainstorming some ideas. It's a piano app after all. So the mascot should have some simple elements of music iconography. My original sketches revolved around this David Bowie inspired cat, but I just, I wasn't connecting with it. I had to go back to the drawing board I had to ask myself, how does this mascot interact with the user? How does this mascot make sense in the app? And that's when I had a bit of an aha moment. Instead of lightning bolt, why not make three stripes on the cat's forehead, symbolic of the three black notes? From there, everything else just flowed really nicely. Instead of a gray cat, it's a white cat representing the white keys. And I felt like, hey, this is kind of a cool dude. He needs a little bow tie. And this is the first mascot that I've ever designed. I don't want to design something that's hard to animate. So what's the easiest pose to animate? Well, if he's asleep the whole time, it's gonna be really easy to animate. Then when you hit a wrong note, the cat wakes up and you lose a life. This grounds the mascot into the app itself and now it kind of makes sense. So to come up with a mascot, you need to think about what type of animal or object best represents your app for example, a Pomodoro timer could have a tomato, a relationship app could be flowers or a love heart, you get the picture. And then you really need to think about how the mascot interacts or feels part of the app and not just plonked in there. You should also consider your own skill level at this stage too. Don't go animating a 3D Pixar inspired mascot on your first attempt. But how did I go from this to this? Well, with the help of ChatGPT, of course. If you're anything like me, your drawing skills are just kinda meh. Like my toddler thinks they're great and all, but if I put this mascot into my app, it's gonna cheapen the entire experience and people are just gonna laugh at it. Ha 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 ha. My five-year-old could do a better job than that. But with the help of ChatGPT, I can fully flesh out the design. This is the character design for a sketch that I'm doing for a kawaii style mascot. Draw me a new version of this, make it come to life, same pose, but with a bit more expression and make it more polished. Wow, that actually kind of looks pretty good. 
I want ChatGPT to generate the full mascot design, body and all, on a transparent background. This acts as my template, and I could ask ChatGPT to manipulate my mascot into any pose I want while keeping the design and proportions consistent. First, I do a rough sketch of a pose, and then I use the prompt, I want this character doing XYZ in this pose. I provide ChatGPT with a mascot template and my sketch. Oh, so cute. It's important to do some of your own creative thinking here. You can't really outsource the design elements to ChatGPT. It's really only good at two things, polishing the ideas you've already come up with or coming up with its own bland, boring ideas. If you sketch your idea first, it helps to prompt ChatGPT to provide a better mascot and pose. Plus, it saves you a bit of back and forth trying to get the mascot absolutely perfect. Next, we're gonna add this mascot to our app. And I guess you could just add the image into your app and call it a day, but it kind of feels so lifeless and a little bit boring. With a few swift UI view animations and a few timers, you can turn a static image like this into this. The secret to making it look like a real life mascot comes down to the small details, a wagging tail, a dynamic expression, a rotating head, and gravity. Yes, gravity. When the cat drops into its default position, the head moves slightly and independently of the whole body, and everything kind of bounces a bit slightly when it hits the ground. This is achieved using SwiftUI with animation bouncy, and a few view layers as well. Then each layer has a different part of the mascot overlaid and independently animated. Seriously, this is worth your time giving your mascot those tiny, subtle qualities. It turns a beautiful design into a living design. If you want me to do a full video showing a step-by-step -step guide on how I created these animations in SwiftUI, let me know in the comments below. But how far can we actually take this mascot thing? Cut the Rope is an insanely popular game with a little mascot who loves candy. The beginning of the game introduces the entire lore of this little guy with a very simple and cute video. You get a package at your door, you cut the package open, and you play the game. But this is like high quality stuff, right? You need a super big budget to get this Hollywood type quality. Well, not anymore. With video models like Sora 2, you can create high budget animations of your mascot within moments. I found the best tool for this is Fowl.ai. It lets you use most AI models and can generate multiple videos or images at the same time, giving you more options and saving time in the process. I used Nano Banana to generate the scene, a quiet animated scene where the character is posed in a natural position, on the piano and someone at the piano playing. Then I simply grabbed the one that I like best and use Sora 2 Image Video Pro. You can also experiment with your mascot and create fun little social media content using Sora 2 as well. I can see myself having a lot of fun promoting this app. Basing the entire identity of the app around a character makes it more interesting to play and also creates fun ideas for promoting on social media. What do you think? Is this the future of using AI tools? not as a way to generate entirely new creations, but to amplify your own creativity? Or will this age badly in a few years time?